professor. I don't have any of them insecurities. <laughs> could be, you can be taller than me, it's fine. I'm not going to be taller than me. I don't really care, I'm like, what is? <laughs> you taller than me. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> uh, welcome to some Real Talk Fridays. I'm Meg, as you know, this is Ben McKinnon. Yeah, no, thank you for thank you for inviting me. It's yeah. a lovely day in Newcastle. Well, not really, it's a little bit rainy, but... It's still lovely, though, it's isn't still it? still lovely, yeah. yeah. We've got some palm trees out the back, got a big section. We're probably not that far from the ocean, I can't complain. No, we're not very far at all. <laughs> um, and ben, Ben's from Wollongong, and uh, he's, he's an interesting, real interesting fellow, and he's a yoga yoga teacher and, yeah, yeah. and many many more he's doing some workshops here in newcastle at the moment oh, not now right at the moment he's with me but at the moment um, it could be in two places it could be yeah, it would be interesting i'd like to i'd like to be able to do that one day <laughs> so um, yeah i got some really interesting workshops on on lucid dreaming and sleep mm, you can't do that dream zone so we'll work on that who knows <laughs> Maybe we're not rushing this right now. Who knows? Yeah, they can. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you can split yourself. I mean, the first time I did that in a dream, I was like walking down the hall and I was like, I wonder if I could go down this hall and that place at the same time and then split myself. And then, How'd it go? And then so you had both experiences at the same time. And you did it? Yeah. Wow. And I always what think, happened? So it's just like I, I was doing the hallway and walking down the other corridor, but I was like on both places at the same time experiencing two things instead of one thing. And I always thought, like, that would be fucking amazing if I could do that in my life. <laughs> nothing's, nothing's impossible. Well, I don't know. You see all those crazy, you read all those old crazy Hindi things about, you know, some guys, like, here, and then someone sees, you know, like, like well, in Tibetan Buddhism, too, and then they see him, like, you know, a thousand kilometres away, he's... You hear about me, right? Do you hear us? Obviously, it's the thing. They say that what we practice grows stronger, so who knows, mm, Ben? It's... Need, need a lot of practice. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. But, um, yeah, we're, we're here to, to talk about things that are a little uncomfortable, right? Mm. Um, I think both of us yes, that's good. <laughs> um, love to, to make people squirm and, and just feel uncomfortable, but discuss the things that um, can be awkward and that can be triggering in that sense, but also need to be talked about. Mm. Um, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I think that when Ben arrived this afternoon, I think the the one word that kind of popped up um, often between us was like overwhelmed and broken, and um, you know, people sort of struggling mm. in the in the world we're in today, um, sort of you know, post COVID and mm. and whatnot. Continuation and, of the COVID saga. Yeah. Yes, people getting tired. <laughs> yeah, exhausted, overwhelmed, all those kind mm. of words, and. Mm. Just expanding onto that a little bit, I mm, think, and yes, just our thoughts onto that. Yeah, I think I think what we're talking about for the podcast, your experience, I think where you're working is quite a, quite a good lead in with what mm. you're seeing with obviously a lot of people who are very busy or in the corporate world or they're just completely burned out. And this is similar to maybe things I uh, saw or I uh, also see in mental health nursing and subacute mental health nursing. So say always been there like the the alcohol the depression the anxiety the ptsd but then the burnout but now i guess with all the sort of uncertainty with covid and financial problems and things like this and the stress and people's relationships and people probably you know definitely drinking more than they used to and they taking more substances than they used to mm. you're seeing this there's definitely this big influx where like the hospital i was working at you know just constantly full of people you yeah know? just people are just they just like i don't know what the fuck to do mm. and i need to do something and so i'm going to enter into the system which is primarily what i would say would be like an, an integrated medical model um which you know has pros and cons mm. um you know that being medications sometimes overused and creating your own sort of addiction problems but then what you're seeing where you're working with mm. the people coming in and yeah and definitely it's um you know been a definite pattern you know working at a wellness retreat which has just been amazing but seeing this pattern of you know 30 40 50 60 plus um age group demographic just mm. coming in absolutely broken you know this uh sense of numbing everything this o mm. overriding sense of busyness that everyone is just trying to accomplish everything to strive to the next level mm. to be someone better than is causing all this 
um, anxiety and stress yeah, totally. and it's coming out physiologically in the bodies where Ben was talking about what he's seeing in that in the medical industry of people to the point where they're now becoming addicted to medication alcohol drugs mm. and where's the end point to that is yeah, and whether they're I guess the question I've always asked is is are people being like say I mean if I come to a um, you know, I guess I go to a... Did you say a fire or if I? If I. Oh, it's the Kiwi accent. accent. Yes, yeah, so if I. Because it's fire. a fiery as well. Fire. Yeah, fire fire. Talking, right? yeah it's, it does sound a bit like that, doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, if I. Really. Um, <laughs> Sorry, go you know, ahead. I say I go to, I come to a doctor and I say to the doctor, you know, I'm super overwhelmed and I, you know, I'm feeling depressed and anxious and I'm not sleeping very well. Now, I guess the, the problem is because you go to a doctor and the doctor's normally busy, you know, they've got 15 minutes or whatever it is, and then you talk to them and they don't really have the time quite often to dissect, you know, well, okay, why are you unhappy? Well, I'm What's happy because I, I fucking hate my job or, you know, my relationship's going really badly or you know, my children are undermining me or um, so there's all these different reasons, yeah? Mm. So it's like this thing of getting to the root cause of, why someone is unhappy, yeah? Mm. as opposed to what we tend to do, which is, is a very Western attitude, is this thing of we will kind of not go to the root cause and we'll sort of try and make it so it keeps going. Mm. So, you know, we're sort of like, you know, that's like, um, I think Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb is quite a good one for yeah. it, where, you know, you just... Oh, you feel like shit, all right, we'll give you something that'll keep you going. You'll yeah. feel you'll feel numb to the world, mm. but you'll be able to keep going, but you won't be happy, but you'll be able to function. Yep. And I it's think this level. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an interesting like the I definitely see like a big need for like probably for me the the medical versus the holistic, like the the more of these places. Um, like these holistic model retreats where people can actually, uh, mm. you know, free to relax. Yeah, yeah. That it's 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 presenting the question. You know, Tara Brock says, "What is it we're unwilling to feel?" And I numbed and ran from everything for like nearly thirty years because mm. I didn't want to feel the 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 pain and the hurt and the belief in myself that I wasn't enough. It was too much for me to bear, so I'd find every single thing I could and every drug under the sun and, mm. you know, the, the alcohol and, and the not eating food because, for me, I wanted to, to be on that level. I was just above the feeling mm. where it was like, oh, I'm just surviving. It's okay, but it could be so much better, but I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, am, am I thriving? Though? Yeah, no, mm. it was, I was just exactly that. I was, I you know, I used to see grey, like that was how numb I was. Things were not beautiful to me at all mm -hmm. like environment and whatnot and i see so much of it um you know in the, in the last nine months of just this sense of you know it's um, i'm here but i'm not here mm. and i think that's you know it's something that is really really common um and it's it's a difficult one because it's mm. once we i think can be given uh uh, you know it's the same as phone addictions and things like that once we're we're taking something or whatever we can become so uh dependent on what's making us feel better in that mm. sense or making us feel numb that mm. yeah it's difficult to see another solution in that sense so what do, what do you think then with these you know you think these people were burned down mm. i'm seeing these people obviously were sort of not coping and stressed and addictions and feelings of inadequacies and you know this constant like race to be you know the best you know there's somewhere they've got to be when they'll finally be happy and they're sort of running on this treadmill and the way i explain it is kind of like you, you're living in this world where um you're outsourcing your happiness yeah, yeah looking completely yeah outside. so like say i'm a business i'm a corporate business and you have some sort of feeling of inadequacy yeah mm -hmm. and i'm like well i've got the thing yeah for you and you know it's only you know 99 99 and you'll have to buy it every, you know, month or something and you'll feel better about yourself and you'll have to keep it up for the rest of your life and it's like this thing of kind of like making you feel like you, your happiness depends on you consuming something. Totally. And then you're now consuming this thing and I'm like, well, I've got another 
thing. You yeah. Know, that would make you feel even more. Yeah. You'll be even better. And then I will, you know, obviously through celebrities and influences and things like this, I'm going to be like, you know, do you want to be like these people? Like, look how happy these mm. people are. They're living such awesome lives, you know. And then I guess I've met people who have been like, you know, they deal with some mental health, like some people who have been like quite high level professionals. And you see that they're not happy. They're totally fucked up. Their yeah. lives are screwed. But the perception in the public is like, if I get to where they are, yeah. I'm going gonna... to be happy. Yeah. Life's going to mm. be fucking amazing. Mm. And it, but it's quite often not. <laughs> yeah, and and this is a thing. It's um, yeah, this conditioning as such that is around us everywhere. You know, we were speaking just before this video about uh, things such as TikTok, and um, you know, I've spoken about a lot. Um, mm -hmm. you know, right down into selfie and Snapchat dysmorphia, where we're now feeling the need to to really modify our physical selves, our faces, mm -hmm. our wrinkles, um, our flaws as such to look perfect and you know ben was extending onto that as to how that can extend out onto like the school playground as such where younger men are perceiving an image of women due to what they look like on their instagram or tiktok mm. and that that expectation now is just a constant so these we're, mm. we're thinking a certain guy or a girl should look a certain way and when they don't look that way we don't feel enough so therefore we're, yeah, we look for we're reaching who... for consumerism and it's something that's going to make us feel enough so we're they also if you know if we look we're, we're always looking we'll always be searching we're just mm. constant on this uh ride to make us feel or look better than what we already are mm. so it's like a sense of that's the it's like a big thing in consumerism is consumerism is built around the sense of lack like you mm. lack something you so i can get you that thing that you lack and then by getting you that thing that you lack you in some way feel you know enough enough mm. yeah but then the thing is is like i want to keep you as a um you know like i want to keep you as a customer mm. so it's not like i i don't want to give you just once i need to keep you like a big one is like like some of the nurses at work who are like in their like early 20s getting the though they don't have wrinkles yeah but they're getting preventative botox yeah okay yeah so they're getting botox so before they get the wrinkles yep. so about you know so, and so i say so what would he do so oh, you know every three months i just get my get my and i said well how are we going to have to keep it up so i just you know have to keep it up yeah you know so now now it's like it's, it's quite genius because it's like okay you don't have wrinkles that's cool don't uh, develop them though. No, it's not natural. But how can I sell to you a product yeah. that's for He's wrinkles? Smart, isn't it? Yeah. So it's very like when you look, it's quite genius because I'm basically turning the person into a, um, you know, I guess a consumer of a product before they even developed the need to consume it. Mm. So it's all of a sudden got this huge back mark. It's also done in America with, um, so when big one is so prozac got rebranded under a different name that's right yes mm. and it's now it's used that, body you, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's now now used for when like young girls are starting to move towards puberty and they're starting to have behavioral changes and they're using it as a way of like managing the behavioral changes mm. so it's quite common in america so oh. like my daughter's my daughter's getting really fucking crazy like what's going on it's like you know she's turning into oh, a woman no. And the mother's like takes it off to the doctor, and doctor's like, oh, you know, well, we'll give her whatever the new name is. But it's Prozac. Yeah, okay. So now this is what we're finding is it is a big market for Prozac for like, you know, girls sort of like just hitting like beginning of menstrual cycles. So not allowing them just to move through it naturally. Yeah, have just the emotional like, stuff, and it's like teaching them to not feel their emotions. Yeah, almost. and also also trying to suppress. So the parents is like, oh, I don't want to fucking deal with this. I'm too busy, you know. I don't oh, want this no. girl having a massive meltdown. Wow, well, I so, didn't know that. Yeah, That's so crazy. I'm going to go take her to the doctor. The doctor's like, well, I've got this thing. It's Prozac. Um, now look at her behaviour's better, yeah? But now she's on Prozac. And then yep. Prozac, over time, starts to mess with the serotonin um, dopamine yep. receptors. Yep. Like anything, over time, we, yeah, it's... Even, yeah, so even the that, Botox, that over time, did, it's not going to get the same result as it did when you're yeah, 20. Yeah, you need more, yeah. yeah. And then eventually you end up looking like, you know, a cat or something, yeah, yeah. you know. Or, you know, you've got that, like, where Cats I make... Cats have lots of wrinkles. No, no, there wasn't. No, what is it like the, where everybody looks like they're... Like, I just one where, like, everybody looks like they're related to each other. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. That, it's that same, like, yeah, yeah. color. Yeah, so it's the yeah. fillers and the Botox, but it's like uh, this thing where you'll be at a, you'll be out somewhere and you'll be like, it's like everybody's each other's cousins. It's Grigal Marta wrote a song about that. Yeah. Like, Everybody looks the same. Yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. looks the same. Yeah. And it's very interesting because it's like this thing of where, That's crazy. yeah, like, yeah. I guess a big thing is, you know, we're talking about this thing of, I brought up about, say okay i'm a male and i see these guys on instagram mm. and they've got big muscles and i'm like all right i need to be like this because then women are going to like me yeah. so i've got to be absolutely perfect body and i might start taking steroids or whatever types of things i get my hands on to do that and then from the other perspective is like and then i'm seeing these women that i want to attain or have relationships with and they look a certain way mm. and maybe some of them have had work done or they've had filters they've used things to make yeah, their bodies look me different too, snow yeah, um, yeah all the of those stuff. Apps, yeah and then i like let's say you know good one is like i don't know i and then maybe like even think of it like a friend of mine went on a date recently using tinder yeah mm. and so he, he he you know saw the girl's profile she looked the way that he was he was like oh she looks like, I like yeah, her yeah, yeah. So he meets her and she doesn't look quite like that, yep. you know. So she's Did you obviously see that pretty often, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's yeah. used some filters mm. in order to make her profile be more um, palatable. Yeah. So that no, she'll I'm... get more men to go on a date with her. And but don't, yeah. Yeah. So see. she gets what she wants, which is feeling a sense of like, you know, yeah, it's high dopamine here. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. but also just yeah. like a sense of like meeting someone and wanting to be happy and yeah. human connection and then. He sees her and she doesn't look that way and then he maybe doesn't go on a date with her. Mm. And so there's this thing of then she feels like she's inadequate. Yep. So then she then consumes more of these products. Yeah, to fill that void. To fill that void. And the problem is, is like there's there's two folders. It's, it's not like one is, okay, she puts something that's not her. But the other one, it's the guy's fault because the guy is conditioned for something which is not real. Yeah. So it's like this thing of like she's forced and it's quite ingenious because you've kind of got like both um, both of them are turned into consumers in different ways. Like the the man is driving the woman's use of these products. Yeah, yeah. So in a sense it's like, you know, this thing of like the men are don't, like sort of driving the woman to, to look a certain way because they're conditioned. Um, and then also like a big one with, with younger males and a lot of males is – Pornography. Oh, hundred, hundred. I'm so glad we went there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the conditioning of the female figure through pornography. Yeah. And then the conditioning of. So you look at like I remember like French showed me the porn stars, and I was like, yeah. Jesus Christ, they've all got Botox face. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It's it's not real. Like what you see there, the sex isn't real. The like. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's that's but then show. you think like I remember yeah. like being a teenager. At, you know, I mean, I remember being like fourteen and like seeing Penthouse on a on a yeah. magazine store and just sneakily like sneaking one you yeah. know like i was like oh you know this, this is my is first four like. so, yeah. you know so i'm looking through that and you know and now i think okay i'm 14 in 2021 yeah like what the fuck yeah am i gonna say, I'm gonna say. <laughs> and it's so it's so you know uh, oh like, jesus it's, it's, so, it's that's what's happening with these young girls too and it's not again the girls or the guys fault it's this con this conditioning and consumerism Digital where consumer. they're thinking it's okay to like gangbang on like a train mm. like i saw i don't watch tv but i saw on the project a couple of maybe a month ago these two young girls and mm. this is what happened to one of the girls and i ended up blew my mind mm. in the open and because they think it's okay because they see it on, on board, on yeah, board. Conditioning, like, it's conditioning and it, yeah. It, yeah and again it's it's just that's mm. just one aspect of it and again, it's, it's a younger also what happens too yeah. is like there's this thing where like the when someone's sort of, you know, in their teens, there's also like you're still wiring up. Oh yeah. You know? So it's yeah. not like uh you're you kind of haven't wired up completely. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So you sort of you think like, okay, girls and boys are being exposed to these types of things. They're starting to think that that's normal. Yeah. Because their parents won't in. talk to them about it. No. No. So, so they see the shit and they're like, okay, well that's how it is. And so everyone starts to engage in these behaviors. And the weird but it's like a self perpetuating cycle because the pornography shows a type of behavior the kids take on that behavior 
and then that behavior does become normal to that generation. Um, so like the, the gangbang on the train becomes like, hey, you heard about the train? Gangbang on the train? Oh, oh you heard train cool. last week? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, totally. It's, and again, it's, it's a practice, isn't it? Like it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a con the conditioning. And the, the thing is, is like, there's like good conditioning and bad conditioning, good habits and bad habits. And at the moment, it's really interesting because it's kind of like technology is making all these things happen and mm -hmm. not they're not all bad. But it's really interesting of like where we're asking the question of like does you know consumerism and capitalism and the constant upgrading of technology has it is it actually are we functionally better off or not? And I don't think it's a conversation that people are having. It's like are our lives actually any better? Yeah. Yeah. Are we any happier? Are we more connected? Or are we actually like kind of more entertained and disconnected and you know, I mean, it's like this thing of even like things of rates of depression and anxiety. Like we are oh, technically so... more connected, yeah, we're... but we we have more depression, mm. we have more anxiety, we have more suicide. Yeah. So it's like this thing of if we look at the markers of what is you know in the society is is positive signs, we're actually seeing that overall. I would say from being forty one now, remember getting the internet when I was maybe 17 and it was dial up. We had a landline. I got my first cell phone probably when I was like 20. It had snake on it. Yeah, you know, I just, it was, and then I remember this thing of like where it was, um, I guess it got to this point where I look back on that time and I think like, was my life worse off or better off? And I would say that for sure I did couldn't do as many things as quickly as yeah. I wanted to, but I also would say I felt like I had a lot more time. Yeah, yeah I wasn't we as rushed. We had more space, definitely. Mm. It's been just when I was talking before about um, the connectedness, and again, mm. this is just mm. where my research has been sitting recently, and I just grabbed this because mm. I wanted to get his name. Um Back in the 1970s, uh, it'll, it'll come to me if I can't find it, I'll post it at the bottom here. There was an experiment done called the Rat Park Experiment. Oh, yeah, no, and this really is really interesting. So with my research on TikTok at the moment about, um, again, in and around um, Snapchat and selfie dysmorphia, people are committing suicide um, due to selfie dysmorphia because they're getting so attached to the image that the screen is showing back to them. Mm. So when they do go out in public, they're getting anxiety, depression, and of so course, they don't want to go out. that 100%, and the rates are getting higher and higher. Mm. And this experiment is linked in with addiction and connection. And of course, back in the 70s, they had the experiment where the, there was a rat in a cage and they had two choices. One was cocaine water and one was water. Mm. And of course, the, the rats would choose the cocaine water. I mean, you mm. wouldn't know the water, like if mm. you're just stuck in a cage. And the rats would obviously get high and then die. And then this, this scientist came in again. I've got his name here, but I'll post at the bottom. Mm. He was like, hang on a second. There's nothing else in the rat's environment. So something's, something's got to change in his environment to choose differently. Mm. So he created a rat park where the rats could have friends and have sex and have food and what are they called? The spinning yeah, wheels. The wheels and yeah, wheels. Yeah, it was and... like a theme park for rats. And that they still had the choice of the water and the cocaine water and they experimented with this for quite a while and not one rat died. They chose other things in their environment and they also had sips of the cocaine water, as you would. But they didn't become addicted. But they didn't become addicted. So there's this connection of um, the addiction that we can create when we don't change our environment. So when we're constantly on our phones and or our devices and this disconnection from human beings... Mm. we start to ch make choices that create we, we that. choose the cocaine. Yeah, 100%. So mm. we, we make ourselves unwell. That's where the, mm. the self-talk, the you know the self-sabotage then turns into an addiction of some sort. Mm. And then the depression and anxiety and then further on suicide. Mm. The social, like you said, yeah. with the rat park, you have the, the social disconnection, yeah. which is essentially like the rat becomes more isolated because I think no stimulant. There's no yeah, but even like relationships, neighbors, and things like that. Like I remember, like when I was a kid, and you know, you knew your neighbors next door. Yeah. You know, yeah. And you were involved with them in some way, and you would help them in some way. And then I think, like, what I've seen over time is like, be it through my personal choices, but also through what seems like a general consensus, is that 
and more often people are starting to be more disconnected from their neighbours, less engagement with the people around them, yeah. like they're sort of like, you know, and then... In a box. So then, yeah. yeah, 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 it's interesting. But yeah, the rap part was a good example, actually, yeah. of what I think is going on, for sure. Yeah, this, we're just really losing connection. We're born into connection. We're born to move. We're born to connect. We're born to have sex. We're born to, to play. And we just lose it all and we become numb. Mm. And, you know, I think that's the guts of this conversation is if we're, you know, finding ourselves in this numbing sense, there's something underneath it. Like it's, it is, we do the, do the work and get underneath it. It's like, what is it that's underneath the numbing? Mm. Why, you know, why am I choosing the, the alcohol or the, the porn or the, mm. the the phone and screen time and stuff like that. Um, I think, yeah, connections are definitely, if you have, like, I think we were talking about earlier about to the, um, oh, like this thing of where, like, say, I mean, I've, I've always interesting things like, I, I always weigh things up against my dreams and the amount of lucid dreams I have and the clarity of my dreams and maybe, like, how, like, the meaning of my dreams and whether there's sort of learning in the dreams or it's just dreams about sort of nothing. Yeah, right. And so, like, if I'm maybe not having as many lucid dreams as I normally would or I am um, having dreams that are just about nothing, like there's no sort of, like, premonition, there's nothing sort of, like, meaningful or teaching or it's just sort of nothing there, then I generally will look at things like what's going on in my life, mm. yeah, is that due to busyness or doing too much or it's interesting, overdoing, yeah. possibly? What, what if it's all about attention? Mm, okay. So it comes down to attention. So when you look at like... So being present. Yeah. So like say all spiritual practices, especially like when you move towards like development of more advanced practices is the ability to sustain attention. Oh, so the 100%. first so the first practices are by learning how to, to hold attention. So mm. it might be like people... They'll look at a candle and just hold their attention for 15 minutes. Or they might say a mantra repetitively for 15 minutes. Or they might just sit and observe their breath or scan their body. And so there's this, okay, we're going to pay attention to one thing or a very narrow thing for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that ability to pay attention kind of becomes the basis of building an ability to pay attention for longer and longer periods. Yeah. So like in... Um, you know, a state called shamatha. So shamatha is the ability for a practitioner to hold single point of attention for generally the, the four hours. Yeah, okay. And so once someone has attained shamatha, their dream... Good luck in the world we live in today. Yeah, good luck, yeah. Especially with phones beeping at us all the time and people who wear Apple Watches and stuff. Yeah, so what's my heart rate? What's yeah. the text message? So there's this, in order... Like, and then when you kind of go into the more advanced dream practices, if you don't have the basis there, it becomes harder to have the stability. Mm. Because essentially, a mind that can hold attention single pointedly for four hours is incredibly stable. Totally. But totally. then the minds that, that develop shamatha, especially in Tibet, um, you know, came from people who were just herding goats and there were very minimal extra. It was just their lives were generally just simple. You know, you just did one thing. It wasn't too many things you did at once. You might be busy. People pride themselves, don't they, on um, being, what's the word? Multitasking. Multitasking. Yeah, yeah. So mul multitasking yeah. is an interesting because not to say, yeah, we can't do a few things at the same time, mm. but this capacity to pay attention. So this... Capacity to pay attention kind of paves the way in many ways to your ability to connect to something bigger than yourself. Yeah. So, like, say if I'm super distracted, like I'm really in this and I'm like looking at this, and what's that? And then I got my phone, my phone goes off. It's really kind of, I'm kind of, the way I explain it is like I'm a, a bird in a park and I'm kind of walking around the park and I'm distracted by the park. But I've got no awareness of like anything else mm. but the park. Yep. And then as you practice and you develop attentional stability and you're not so distracted, it's possible then to kind of like that the bird kind of goes up higher, it takes off. And it's then able to sort of see the layout of the park. And then it goes further and says, well, the park's within a city yeah. and the city's within this other place. And so there's this thing now where what made no sense in the park because it happened over another end of the city, 
now make sense because they can see the actual the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's like connecting. So it's like being the observer kind of thing. Is that or yeah, this mm. this watching of what's going on. Yeah, or just connecting connect, connecting to something mm. like like we talk about like you have a conceptual um you know you you might have like a qualification or oh. you've done much a much lot of study or you have all the right credentials and you know so I mean I know you know there's plenty of doctors who are drug addicts there's plenty of psychologists with incredibly yeah. dysfunctional relationships there's yeah. plenty of psychiatrists who um, abuse their patients yeah. you know and not to say there's not good doctors and good psychiatrists and good psychologists because mm. there are but just because you have a piece of paper doesn't actually mean that you have like true uh, wisdom yeah it's a yeah. good word, yeah. Yeah, so to have wisdom, you need to have, like, this capacity to pay attention. And, and connection to your intuition is yeah. what I was which, which, before. Yeah, you need attention. When it comes through you, it's, yeah. Yeah, but say if you're distracted, yeah. there's no space. Yeah. So generally, if you want to connect to something bigger than yourself or your intuition or whatever we're going to call it, mm. you have to have the space. So yeah. say, like, I'm... You know, I mean, I'm, I something's trying to give me an answer to something in a, in a sense of like some sort of synchronicity or intuition, and I'm just like so busy and distracted, can't hear it. Can't hear it. Yeah. So this is the thing: is like everybody has this capacity to, uh, I guess, connect to something bigger. Mm. But in order to connect to something bigger, we have to learn to pay attention. Yeah. But we live surrounded by things which make us essentially. Distract. Distracted, yeah. We live in a constant world of distraction, isn't it? You know, mm. um, as Rumi says, you know, when we're quiet, we're able to hear. Mm. And, you know, it, I, I knew that so well. I didn't know what quiet was, I think. Mm. And many of us don't. And I, I know when I start to step out of that, it's, you know, it's what we talk about in the, the be here method in that sense is when I'm present, I can make a choice. And mm. that's a choice to yeah. slow down and, and reconnect back to intuition, guidance, God, source, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, for that wisdom to drop in, it's it's not, it's something that's available to all of us. None it's of not us. space. Yes. And you need to pay attention. Pausing. And pausing, yeah. Stopping. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess, like, you know, you to, to, I guess, like, lead it into to maybe, like, a, a finish is, like, we could just say, like, we've talked about, I guess, like, we were in this thing of, like, obviously there's all these things that are quite crazy and quite wrong, yeah, and so... What what power do we have? You mm. know, like what power do you have in a world that seems to be running away, and you know you can't seem to do anything about it. And mm. you may not be able to. Like the world might just go off the rails, and everyone might turn into clones of each other, and they're addicted to their phones. Yeah. And that might be something absolutely out of your control. It, yeah, it always. Yeah. So you know the the thing if you don't want that, and you want to choose something else that might be you're less reliant, you're less of a consumer, then it starts with this thing of like, okay, maybe we're going to go for a walk and I'm not going to take my phone. Yeah. Totally. Or I'm going to set aside where every time I wake up, I'm going to sit here for 10 minutes and just focus on my breathing. Yeah. Or I'm going to start, you know, writing down my dreams if I can remember them. Like, that's a big one. Yeah. Because that's many ways the subconscious mind gives content in that way. And I, that's a big one for me. Like, it's not for everyone. Well, they yeah. do say that you get... You, I, I don't know much about lucid dream. Mm. Ben's the mm. one for that, but they do say that you get a lot of answers in your dreams, and yeah. you you go through these. Um, sometimes you can even heal trauma. Mm. Um, Bessel van der Kolk speaks about that a lot in the body keeps the score. Mm. Um, but as I said, a lot of time yeah, I just journaling, too, yeah, just journaling. Yeah, you know, how, how am I feeling busy. today? You yeah, know, like journaling. It is just yeah that that true sense of um, we we can't fix what's going on around us. You know, none of us can. We can't fix another person. But we can do something about ourselves and it's mm. it is about choosing to be present and actually making a, a kind or a compassionate choice mm. to, to pause, slow down and and then do something if, that feels good for us. Mm. And you know, uh, that's available to all of us. Mm, and on a big scale that can change the world. Mm. You know, rather than conforming to what uh, society thinks we should, could or would be. Mm, I think. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think thank we you covered very much. It. I think, yeah, yeah, no, that was good. That was good. I think we yeah. covered a lot. Well, thank you for, uh, hopefully you got anything out of this, and we'll hopefully you'll see more of this girl doing some more of this with some interesting people.
Definitely, definitely yeah. will. But um, if you're interested, like, he's amazing um, about the lucid dreams and the sleep workshops. I put a link or something. That's, right, that's what I was looking to, for. So check him out. Go on. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's something I would love to learn yeah. a little bit more about. But thanks, Ben. Oh, thank you. Great. Cool. Cool. Yeah,